Welcome to episode 6 of The Table, and we have some interesting modern topics to talk about, some very catchy things that are online today, um, but first off, how, how is everyone doing? Amazing. Good, yeah. I think everything's good. Truly amazing. I, lo- I love the, you know, the depth of answers that we're going to be giving here. I mean, it's not raining, so we're good. Everything, I think everything we got a whole great. week of rain You want the real answer? There. Right. Yes. Horrible. <laughs> Why is it horrible, Ed? Because there was a dog here that shit in its crate on the way here. Then oh. I pulled over in the middle of the road to take it out because it smelled so bad. And then on the way up the mountain, it did it again. And I hosed <laughs> them here. I've lived that life. So basically, Ed... I'm I asked, leaving the game. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> no, I, was, I was walking up here, you know, trying to get all set up. And I asked Ed, I was like, so when are you going to leave the dog game? Do you want to release the the next steps here? Oh, right. I told that it's a sign. It's a secret. You'll find out in the next six episodes, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Little hints scattered across the... <laughs> the slow demise of Ed leaving the yeah, dog. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Every time I hear about like all these dog training horse stories, I appreciate how my dog's trained, and I don't train him too much. I, I When I'm right here... Right? You know, you guys' dog stories, I appreciate <laughs> not having a dog. <laughs> well, you know, like, hey, actually... That must be a great life. No, actually, you know, like, I got to thank Mike for that, too. Like, in a good way, not in a bad way. Oh, great. But uh, <laughs> if you watch TCU videos, it's like, when when to get a dog and when not to get a dog, he said, if you can't do X, Y, Z, then you shouldn't get a dog. So I was like, oh, can't do them. So <laughs> like, speaking of that, I was freaking, uh, you know, that dog park video. Oh, what, no. someone one, bullying you again? No, just like, it's just funny. Like, I don't, I don't really care about the one say. dog park video. It's like the it's like, dog park video. Every like there. couple days, like someone makes like an ignorant ass statement on there. And like, it just coming like coming to more to prove for me that like people are really stupid about like 80% of people that own a dog shouldn't own a dog. Yeah. So I made a smart decision. I would say so, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, if I had a normal nine to five job, I would not own a dog. I think that's just like too much work. It's yeah, definitely but, addition. I mean, even, even, well, how busy we are. Yeah. It's probably even worse. But you know how like it's, us is like kind of more flexible? Yeah. Where, say you need to potty your dog or some shit, we kind of could. You yeah. spread our day yeah. longer. That but someone sense. who's gone the whole day, it's kind of hell no. No, I got you. All right, so enough about dogs because we're not here to yeah. talk about dogs. It's not drinks and dogs. Is not... <laughs> we do not talk about dogs on this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it. actually, we're going to, you know, somebody was missing on the last episode. So mm-hmm. we're going to pick on him. And Roman has actually brought a topic. Well, I kind of forced this topic on him because he is the expert in this topic amongst at least the four of us. So, Roman, what is topic number one? <laughs> it's going to be. AI, right? Um, I think the trendy topic everybody's talking about nowadays. So what's the topic? So to give us context. What are we talking about today on AI? I mean, I think it's really just kind of touching on AI, where it's going, kind of what it is or why use it or why stay away from it. Um, I guess it's kind of like a mixed bag of opinions. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm a believer. I kind of, from the get-go, dived into it. I feel like we've had a lot of, like, tech and technology is coming away and usually like i myself and a lot of people are a little bit late adopters to it like they're always avoiding it and i when i kind of heard of ai at the first time i think it was what in like november or such i've heard of it but when it first came to us from chat gbt i think that's the big one i really just was like man i'm gonna jump on this in the forefront see what advantages i can get from it how i could use it and kind of run with it so i've been a believer my biggest one tool i use is uh you know, chat GBT, and then there's one I use for fun called Mid Journey. Mid Journey, just to give a little gist of it, it's like a design software. You put in a couple keywords and it creates a design for you. And I always oh, love, I love, I love sending it to G because it's like, hey G, look at what I designed, and it takes me like 35 seconds, and you know, G creates like crazy designs that take a lot of effort. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, and then you know, chat crazy, GBT, man. I use that probably daily in some form or or one way or another and in terms of what i use it for is like whether i'm sending out an email um, whether i'm trying to do a task like create some kind of a copy you know for something new whether it's like a website thing a brochure or some kind of marketing material or even you know for knowledge like if you're like sometimes i'll read a book i'll give you an example i just went back to a book atomic habits and i left on it like chapter seven 
and it's been months I was reading two different books and I came back to it and I was like, man, what was, you know, I kind of forgot what the first six chapters were. So I just want to chat GPT and say, give me a summary and it kind of breaks it down and you can ask it another question and it'll give you even more detail. So it's a pretty cool tool and you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out now using AI. Um, I haven't really dived into, you know, softwares you could buy that use AI itself, but I use it on a day to day to create my own stuff. I had to send out an email today about a property we're looking to lease and I wrote it up and then I just threw it in chat GPT and said, Hey, can you rewrite this to be a little bit more clear? And it just kind of fixed any grammar, grammar stuff, but also just made it a little bit more convincing. So it's pretty cool. Wait that for the people. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Easy. For the people that do not know what Chat GBT is, can you give like a general like? Yeah, I mean overview. Yeah, I think to keep it simple, because a lot of times it gets complicated. Chat GBT is literally a website you go on. I think it's like something dot Chat GBT. Um, but if you just Google Chat GBT, all free right now, and it works in the way that you go on Google and you search something, but it gives you the answer. So Google shows you resources. This takes like, all, I mean, the way to easily explain it, it takes all those resources and it gives you the answer. So even if you go, I want to make cookies, right? Give me a recipe. It'll give you the recipe, but it'll also give you all the details on how to do it. And you're not like going and scattering and looking for the best recipe. It kind of like scans all the recipes, gives you the best one, gives you step by step. And let's just say you get stuck at a spot where you wanted to use, you don't have brown sugar, so you could say, can I use white sugar? And it'll give you the answer. And you don't have to go and like research and kind of compose a bunch of stuff and, and figure out an answer, it gives it all to you. So I use it for all sorts of stuff, but the main thing is like, if I'm writing up something new about business or trying to learn something, or I even when my wife was applying for jobs, I used it for cover letters and make, building up a resume. I fixed my LinkedIn on it. So it's, was... Have you used it before, G? So I use it on Notion. <clears throat> Oh, Notion has... use AI, right? Yeah, Notion oh, AI. Yeah, that's the new thing that came out since I, I'm a Notion user. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of the same thing as Chat GPT, but it's integrated into Notion, so you can automate your tasks, so you don't have to like continue to like rewriting it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Or it'll be like, hey, what are my tasks for today? Since mm-hmm. you have already have like your database like set up, so it'll just like pull from there. Have you guys seen the editing AI softwares? I have actually. Have you yeah. tried them or? or... A little bit. Uh, I have not tried it yet. Uh, there's one. I think it's called Rescript. Yeah, Rescript for scripting. And, yeah. But there's some now. I think even Captions adds it in there where when you upload a video, it'll automatically cut out the gaps. And the cuss words. And the cuss words without you doing anything. <laughs> you so might then, need to use that for this. <laughs> so then you have like a video at least. Why did everyone look at Mike? <laughs> hey, I, I didn't do that much cussing. You don't want to mess up the last one. I totally did on the last one. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to go. I mean, this is just the start of it, right? I think we had access as regular users like December of so, 2022. So. so, you know, as a discussion, so you give them the context. So, the discussion point is like, what, are, what do you think the implications of AI is in business for us? Maybe I could already, I could already hear like Mike's voice in my head is like, it's just making everybody more lazy. <laughs> like, like, it's like, you know, no, cause I is that what you were thinking? That's uh, what he was thinking, wasn't it? Like, that, <laughs> that was one of the things I was thinking. I watched too many Terminator, Terminator movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, no, but it does. I, that, so. I feel like it really does make people more lazy. Well, I have like a, not, not my cousin, but like my, my cousin's uncle, they're like a professor somewhere and they're like, dude, none of these kids are learning. They're just writing their essays with chat GPT basically. No Cause, I mean, cause I use it for like, uh, like Instagram slash YouTube captions and you'll be like, okay, uh, dog training YouTube description. It'll give you like three paragraphs. Oh, so imagine if you had that in college, right? It's like, I could finish my essay in like an hour or yeah, less. And just to touch on that, you could even say, you know, you're in ninth grade. You could say, write this at a ninth grade level. Oh yeah. my So you're not getting like too fancy with it yeah so that was so but i feel okay so this is what i feel about ai that is all cool and dandy but it takes out the authenticity yeah that's what i think you're the authenticity yes but also like where's the human voice i mean like i mean there is an actual voice ai out there that i think ed <laughs> oh dude that's <laughs> even like converted mike's voice into ai yeah 
that's crazy uh but you know like where's like your human voice aspect of, like where's the creativity i feel like that's still gonna be around no matter what because there's still a human design element to it mm -hmm. that you can never take away 100 percent. you yeah. know like i mean even with the graphic design stuff like that is cool but you and you is like it's not what i was right. specifically I, looking it's for, very much you know? a baseline on yeah. even like i know how, everything i mentioned like i didn't just take an email and hit paste right it's like i go in then i change it a little bit mm. um same you know same thing i imagine with captions right you're mm. getting all this stuff and you're pulling from it it's a really good baseline to take from and then build upon and it saves you the research time or the 30 40 minutes the hours it takes to kind of like start something all right mike you know what i'm gonna say it's like <laughs> everyone's a robot. Like we're, we're yeah. all the Asian, dogs, like people yeah. on this table are like all yeah. into it and like trying to figure things out and then i think it's like social media right like you said uh, people, yeah, everybody was like i don't want to use it somewhere no, you know? I got, i'm like 30 percent or something Wait, have, you seen, have you seen chat gbt before i've heard of it i've heard of it i mean i've read a bunch of stuff on yeah, that i show my mom and my mom's a believer now that's how i mean i think I, goes. I think we're in a constant a constant um path for like doing less work I feel like we're always looking for that, and the more it happens, the more technology. And I have nothing against technology. I have nothing against that stuff, but I, I am very cautious in the sense of using those things because what it does is for like the normal people, like not like people who like work as many jobs as we do and have as many tasks as we have. And you know, from the moment we wake up, we're working to the moment we go to sleep, we're working. But for the general public, I feel like this making people like Ed said, you know, with the college students doing that. I feel like we're we're creating more avenues for laziness. You know, we're creating more avenues for these things. I mean, granted, technology is great, and all that stuff that's going on is awesome, and it should be used, you know, for people who need it in that sense. But, you know, I'm just cautious in the sense of, you know, we're, we are creating a lazy future, you know, because, like you said, it just got available, what, November? December? Yeah, it was like 20, late 2022. So imagine what we have in a year from oh, now, yeah, two years from now, three years from now. Years from now. Eventually, yeah. we're just going to be a bunch of fat dolphin noises sitting <laughs> on the couch talking to <laughs> our phone and having all of our you know shit done and if we don't if we're not cautious with that we're going to end up that in a few years you know i always talk about that movie idiocracy from years yeah. ago that's like a real deal thing that's about to happen to us because of you know stuff like this that's Again, the costco no, one right no that's the one where they're just like <laughs> where the kind costco? of <laughs> they're like welcome to costco and it's like some like giant place or something like that it's just like they like you basically sit they sit in a chair and like they just watch a bunch of like short like basically like the tv was what tiktok is now <laughs> Right. it's like it's crazy so it's it literally if you look at it it's like it's this is happening so i mean i think it's cool i mean the pictures that you showed me i thought that's i thought that stuff was awesome yeah, I was like, like dang. Designer, I mean. yeah i was like dude that that's cool speaking of laziness Maybe i we saw could this pop one up, thing pop Here, up one like, of my creations yeah, asking something and oh, you know. i ain't touching that thing no he's like <laughs> so look you know just to kind of on the post side i'm curious to think get your thoughts on this i feel like what it is is an example like you use social media a lot and you get new clients right so yeah right and it, i think it comes back to the same way of like back in the day say one it was i remember like yelp used to matter you know ads was everything like you had to run ads and it's the same way of like going out there and having to tell people hey i train dogs like let me show you it's the same thing as like now i can do it on a a grand level right and i feel like that's kind of like where you can use this technology is just making things more efficient so you can grow bigger and faster yeah and that's like what you said like when you said the you typed up that that brochure thing and it made it more convincing exactly i think like that stuff is cool i was just talking about like what ed was saying people were using it to write their essays and stuff like that or being like <laughs> yeah. you said you can write it at ninth grade level yeah, yeah i mean and, shoot man yeah, like, then you ain't doing yeah, yeah i mean look no look at like look at the next generation of kids that we have you know like look at like Dude. the younger generation these people are you know i say younger generation like i'm old but like you know, look at the kids in their twenties. Like everyone wants a handout, you know. And like that stuff is something that's that I see happening. I mean, we all have gray hair, so we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Here, look at this. I put dog training introductory paragraph. Oh God. Are you recording this? What? You better screenshot it. You have to pop. Oh yeah, how are you gonna, show gonna it pop it up? No, no, I just want to show them this. Oh, the fascinating right thing, you know, what Ed just touched on. If this if somebody else me. types it, Speech it's it. not the oh, same okay. answer because it's every time it's different. making its own unique. So the, like we can't if he don't screenshot it now, we're not gonna find that answer ever again. That's kind of crazy same though too because yeah. it's oh, unique to it. So, and that's why a lot of kids are using it, right? Because there's no plagiarism. Yeah. It's writing it just super fast. Don't be lazy, you little <laughs> shits. No, I did test <laughs> for it all before. the kids listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to 
Uncle Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I tested how ridiculous it was because I was like, all right, let me think of a TV show and think of an event that happened somewhere, right? I was like, when did this happen in this show? It'd be like, episode, da 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 season, da 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 I was like, that's so how do they do cool. it so fast? Yeah, it's insane. That's pretty cool. That's now there's a cool. premium, though, so everybody's getting on it. It's like 20 bucks a month. Yeah, for faster speed. Faster or speed, because like it gets so overloaded nowadays. All right, that was... I think that's... Uh, I mean, AI is a pretty crazy topic and we'll see how where that goes yeah um but we're gonna roll right into the next topic guys and this is you know going back to what we you know the the entrepreneurial discussion that we have at the table um and this kind of goes with like you know maybe not even business uh entirely but um just people in general but it's the the topic is what you can and can't control Mm. so the context is like um i know a lot of people uh in in my circle or um my family and friends circle they're like hey why don't you do this why don't you do that right like i'm like i can't control how other people feel about things but what i can't control is myself type of thing right and then you know how you get people to do the other things you can't you can't really get people to do other things you can only inspire and motivate them to do things that maybe you want them to do right so that's kind of the context of the discussion i mean I would like to start off with the, uh, with the uh, mic on this one. Actually, <laughs> see what your thoughts are on that. I mean, you, you kind of said it. Like, I mean, the, uh, as you guys have known, I've said this before. Like in my business, and I'll use this in the business sense. Uh, in my business, we've gone through a lot of like ups and downs, like some pretty severe like lows where we're about to lose a business, and some pretty like giant highs where we're thriving and everything's going cr- like you know crazy, like kind of how it is now, or how it's been in the last few years. Mm. You know, everything's been great. The things I've learned over those years, because like I said before, business is personal to me. So what happens in business affects my personal life and what happens in my personal life affects my business life because it's all kind of the same thing to me. So the one thing that I have learned is that you can only control what you do. You can't control your environment. You can't control the people around you. But what you can do is like for me, like, you know, I push, I push myself pretty hard on a daily basis. And that's just how I maintain control over my life. And no matter what I'm doing, it's either you said a zero or a hundred percent. So within that, realm of controlling everything that's in my life with my routine with my work ethic with the stuff that we create all those things and pushing forward in return they kind of i don't want i don't like using the word inspire but it kind of pushes the people around me to go harder especially in my you know with my primal canine business you know because if the boss is doing these things then you know they got to do they got to go harder too so that's the one thing that i've learned uh, when it comes to and that's one thing i've learned in the last almost you know almost 10 years in a few weeks in a couple weeks now uh, well primal is really focusing on yourself, really focusing on controlling the elements, like controlling the things that you do and making it smart, making it so you're going to become a better person. So you are, you know, you're progressing, you're doing these things. Cause if you start progressing and you start pushing and you start doing all these things, then people around you are going to want to start pushing because they see the results that you're getting as well. And they want those results too. So they're going to have to, they're going to want to go ahead and go forward with that. So controlling yourself and learning how to control yourself and control those emotions when times get tough, when things get hard, and still pushing forward and continue to push forward and having all those things and having that control over yourself, that's that's what's gonna push everyone around you. So not focusing on the things that you can't control, but focus on the things that you can't control and the thing that you can't control is yourself and the habits and the things that you do on a daily basis. Follow up question. Why don't you like the word inspire? Because I don't really I don't look at myself as someone that inspires people or motivates people. I just look at myself but as But you like, do. Yeah, but like I don't I don't like thinking about it in that sense. It's like for me it's just more of like if my dumbass can do this thing every single day, if I can do these things being as gimpy as I can, then you can do it too. Like you, you like if I can get here and have the stuff that I've, I've acquired and you know have the status that I've acquired in my in my industry, then you can do it too. So it's not necessarily I don't like saying that stuff, um, just because I don't you know I just don't like saying that stuff. But like inspire, like motivate things like that about myself to other people. But you know I just try to I try my best to forge the path. Like I tell my guys. You know, I'm giving you guys cheat codes. Like I'm showing you how how I, did, how I got here, and this is how I got here, so you can get here too. All right. So one more one more follow up question. Yeah. I'm going. I'm writing my card on this one. But... Didn't someone call him the David Goggins of the dog training? <laughs> yeah, that was. Oh yeah, who said that? <laughs> yeah. No, I thought someone commented that or something. No, they, might, they put a story on uh, Instagram about oh. that. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I I think it's like you know like on um, expecting people to you know push forward and like you know like having them get there right because we are we all have businesses we all have teams to a certain extent 
what, what is your take on expectations then? You can't have them. You can't have them? You can't no. have them. In other people, I agree. is that what you mean? You, like, can't I agree. Ha- you can have them of yourself. You can't yeah. have them in other people because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's like, like I said, you can't control. Because what happens is if you set expectations for somebody else, especially things that they have never done before, for your, before every, right? like never have done before, right? If you set expectations for somebody else, you're only setting yourself up for a let, uh, letdown. And it's not necessarily because that person is bad or like they're messing up. It's just because the expectations, they, like for me, the expectations I have for myself are, are grand. Mm-hmm. So if I can't lower those, if, it doesn't make, if this makes sense, I can't lower those expectations for somebody else. Because the expectations I have for myself are the same expectations I'd have for somebody else. And if I do that, that's unfair to them. Mm, because they're living yeah. their own life, they're on, they're on their own path, right? Right. So that's why I said, I, was like, I give my guys cheat codes, but I don't have expectations for them. I want things for them. I want things for everybody that I work with. I want grand things for everybody I work with. But I'm not setting an expectation because I'm not like, there's no need for that. Like, I can show you, I can get, I, sh- I can show you how I get here. Like, you know what's said? You can uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know. Yeah, if you have an expectation, I think you're just going to be like, why are you like this? To exactly. Everybody? <laughs> and I wasn't, you know, I ain't even going to lie. I was like that for, I was like that for like the first four years of my, like, when I started Primal Canon, I, like, we had major growth. Yeah. Like, because my thought process was like, if I can get here and I can do this stuff, you can get here and you can do this stuff. And I set an expectation for people, but all that led me. Mm-hmm. All that led to was, you know, me being irritated, being like, why is your dumbass not doing this thing? Like, why are you not, you know. Even disappointed, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, I was disappointed, more frustrated and angry. Mm-hmm. Like, I <laughs> but, told you exactly what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, again, it, you know, it's, everyone lives a different life. Everyone has a different path. And, you know, some people aren't about that. And, you know, that's them. Can't have expectations for them. So may- maybe just flip the, 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 the topic here. It's like what well, how do you set expectations right because the answer is you can and can't control things right that's what it, that's what we're really talking about here right yeah. mm-hmm. it's expectations so how do you deal with expectations well i mean for you guys the first question is do you have expectations for others and, and and or not and then from there it's like how do you what do you expect and like how do you deal with those expectations yeah i mean i think that's a hard one i think it's really having expectations if somebody is part of your team, right? Like I think on our level, for example, it becomes easy like because everybody just has expectations of what they do. Like almost everybody has their own roles, right? Um, when you go into like, like I've had business in the past with partnerships and that's hard when you just say, hey, you're a 50 partner, I'm 50 partner, we're both doing this and we both do everything. Then it gets very hard because it's just like open, right? And then you start feeling like I'm doing all this stuff, they're not doing that and it's nothing set, right? So I think it's having, if it's very established, it becomes very easy because then it's just accountability. And I think it's having that transparency of what everybody's responsible for. I have a good one for you then. Mm-hmm. So say you are in a 50-50 partnership thing and that you said before it could be kind of messy or whatever. How would you want to like make it not perfect, but like as close as you can? Yeah. Now, knowing I that. mean, it's actually, that's actually a really good one because I had those businesses before with people didn't really work out and now i'm going into this new venture with 50 50 partners and i even told when we first discussed this everybody who's part of it we all discussed that hey you know we're all partners in this but we have to know that sometimes it's not going to be 50 50 right like maybe at the beginning this person's going to do like 80 percent of the work and then the day to day they're going to be very hands off but when this kind of situation comes up they're going to step back in so we have to all go in this and including myself knowing that it's not always 50 50 even if it's 50 50 ownership it's about everybody just doing their part and doing their 100 percent. and you know if they don't have anything to do right there they could sit back and have weeks of, of no work so there becomes a line then so there's a there's a conflicting arguments between what mike said and what Roman said, right? I think, I think different ways to look at it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, like I said, it's like, I think what Roman was saying in the sense of like business, right? Like when you sign up for like, just the, you know, think about like the stuff that we do together, you know, like we're all partners in our stuff, but we all handle things. We all do different all roles. Things, yeah. It's more about like, you know, we have clear definitions of what we do. Right. So that, at that sense, when you have a clear, like I said that my thing, like, I don't want to use the word expectations, but like when they're like, okay, like, you know, I do like, I'm essentially like the front man on video, right? Like I'm the guy that's always doing those things. You're the Drake. Like, oh God, don't. He's the that. actor. He's, the, he's Drake. You know? He's our Drake. But like, you know, like, so like, that's kind of my role, right? So I perform my role. You know, like that's, that's if that's an expectation, that's the role that I perform, right? You guys handle like video, 
graphics, you know, log logistics, all those other things. You guys handle that stuff. I don't really touch any of that. I just do, you know, what I do, right? So it's like it's more when we when you, I assume if you want to define expectations, if someone was doing something you're, and you're doing it consistently, that's an expectation, right? Like because you're already doing it, so now we're expected to do that. So if we don't perform to that level, which you said, like if we're not giving our hundred percent at that level, then you know we're we've already done it. So it's not necessarily being, ex, you know, expectation. It's just something that we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what Roman was yeah. saying. Like for me, like when we talk about when I said about expectations, I'm not having expectations on people. I'm talking about like I don't expect someone to run to wake up at three thirty in the morning like I do and run thirteen miles. Hell no. Like you know, it's not. <laughs> that's what that's that's what I would do, right? Because yeah. if I expected someone to do that, then I'd be let down every single day because yeah. I'd be yeah. anticipating, right? Yeah. Like, cause you know, but that's like un, that's an unrealistic expectation. Yeah. So like that's kind of what I was saying. Like I don't have expectations for people in that sense. Like I do if we agree to do something and these are our roles, then yeah, because we've already agreed to do that. We've already essentially signed that, you know, non, you know, we've uh, that verbal contract. Right. So like that's what we that's at that point we've already done it because we've already agreed to it. Because we're working towards an end in mind. Yeah, well, no end, just global domination. That's what I'm working towards. So it's like it's like setting the expectation. Yeah, you once you set it, then then you're there. But if right. we haven't set it, then why? Then we're all we're all flailing in the wind. I like I like to like think of myself as like what can I do in a situation, right? If this person is not doing this, then what can I do to change myself, change the angle, change the conversation to get them to understand where I need them to to get to that you know to that whatever we need to do, right? Whatever it's like, for example. Uh, me and Roman actually, you know, talking about uh, changing our website for TCU. And Roman's like, oh, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, from the feedback that we've gotten and, you know, from the collective, like, uh, conversation amongst us, we think it needs to be changed to reflect our branding more. And if we set that expectation from the get-go and, like, having uh, Roman understand that, then, all right, well, I've... I've either inspired or motivated him to get to that point right because that's how i i see everything like that's what i can't i can't control what roman sees or feels from the website itself but i can get him to see my point of view right and i think that's that goes back to me being able to control the conversation right so that's i think that's a different like take and look on it uh from my point of view you know if that makes sense am i making sense i hope that makes sense yeah, I think it was just a very broad question. That's why everyone has like very different answers, but it makes okay. sense. Okay, yeah. good. Because sometimes I, uh, you know, I just talk like nonsense, and hopefully it makes <laughs> it makes. Sense. Maybe I need some AI to kind of help me with my thoughts. With like, yeah. Maybe like a chip in my it could brain. Give you the thoughts. And just tell it. Tell me what to think. And, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> All right, uh, Ed. Should we just wrap on this one? No. I got nothing to say on this one. You, you can't I feel like no. So I feel like with Ed, like um, you know, lately I think you know, leaving from having a regular job, you're very independent on like what you do day to day to get things done, right? Mm -hmm. Is that just something, is that kind of like, cause you have that, like I can control this. I'm gonna just knock it all out and do it myself. Versus what? Versus like, you know, like I feel like your next step, for example, to growth is having a team. Yeah. But I don't even think you're like ready to take that step cause there's so many like obstacles about having maybe you know if it relates to expectation but having somebody else responsible oh, I for see. what you okay. do i mean yeah i think i want to hire somebody but i think it'd be so hard i think i would just be like man i don't trust you i don't trust you <laughs> but i think mike told me he's like you gotta just go through it to find well even you said right yeah well i guess it's a bad term to say that what you said, I think it's, fire I said and hire and fire i said hire fast and slash and burn fast, you know? <laughs> no. slash Otherwise, like, you'll never get done. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think in for me, for my mindset, I have to kind of get over that I can't expect a perfect employee yeah. or whatever. They don't exist, really. Yeah. And I think I need to, yeah, basically accept that they're probably going to be like, I don't know, you've been in business. Would you say somebody can be 75% of you in the workplace? I don't, that's, that's something like... I really, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I try not to look, expectations again. I try right? not to like, <laughs> Yeah. I want them to do the best job that they can do. And I usually put the person in the position and just from the years of doing this, yeah. I'll usually put them in the position. I know that they're going to thrive in that, to do their best job. Mm. But like it took me, I mean, shoot, I've been a professional actually with, you know, in business doing dog training stuff for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. So like I've, I've 
I've hired and fired a lot of a lot of people <laughs> um, just because of our, our industry. Our industry, is, yeah. our industry is funny, you know. It's, it's not like I feel like you guys know, right? They're all gonna go. Cause... Yeah, I mean, eventually, either like because my ideal is I'm gonna eventually, you know, all my guys who are like solid, I eventually want them to have their own primal canines or yeah. thrive in something else, right? But it takes a long time to go through those things. You know, it takes a long time and a lot. You go through a lot of employees, especially in our industry, because people from the outside looking in, they're like, oh, you're playing with dogs and puppies and all this other stuff. When real, when in real life, you're picking up shit, getting shit on you, uh, right, ruining right. your clothes, <laughs> like you're cleaning things up, you're getting bit by dogs, you're getting yelled at by <clears throat> unreasonable clients. Like there's a lot of things that happen. It's a lot of stress. It's 24 seven. But I think in any industry, that's fair. I mean, we always have this conversation where it's like, oh, like barbers. At some point, they're going to cut somewhere for three, five years and then start their own thing. Yeah, yeah but I, I kind of like what Mike said. So it's either that, right? Like either know they're going to go or you're going to set them up for a position where they grow exactly. with you. But in a big level, right? Because there has Absolutely. to be that huge reward at the end. I mean, I like, look at it this way. Like kind of what you're saying is that Primal Canon itself is 10 years of, of a decade of, you know, stellar reviews. We, we're well known in our industry. It's smarter, and that's why I said I give my guys cheat codes. It's smarter for them to, hey, I want to go on my own. All right, let's open a Primal Canine. Let's open an affiliate company. Let's do this, do this stuff. But what happens is in our industry, people get egos and people get like, oh, I can do this, stuff like that. But in reality, they they don't know shit about running a business, ads, marketing, social media, all these other things. And I make it look easy, so they think it's easy. But I've seen it a bunch of times. I've seen it in you know past employees. None of these guys are doing it's shit. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. one, everyone thought it was. But like, I was like, no, like you're, they're not doing all this other stuff. The craft so. is only one section of the whole business. Yeah, that's one percent. I feel like yeah, I feel like the other part is a little bit harder, right? Like you know, you could fake a business and you could do well. Like you know, let's say as an example, like I could say I'm a dog trainer taking a dog, yeah. do a little bit, and I, I still got paid, right? It's not like it got this guaranteed. So you can do that, whatever. But the selling it is the hard part. Yeah, and staying and staying consistent and mm-hmm. growing and doing better and consistently growing and like all these other things that happen in it. Yeah, they think they they think they can do, but they can't. I haven't seen one they can yet. <laughs> Anyways, so I mean, yeah, that's a that's a very like heavy conversation. I feel like we could talk a lot about expectations and what we can and can't tr- control and how to motivate, inspire, even though Mike thinks he doesn't inspire and motivate. He definitely does. <laughs> and have you seen his Instagram? It's like all inspirational workout shit. I, I know, I know you know, because like half the stuff, like Ed already made it. Like Ed made that stuff. <laughs> Ed made we, haven't, we haven't done a motivational one in a while. We probably should. Yeah. I don't know. Should we? It's maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, you need to make more cute stuff. <laughs> oh my god As no, I, like, see, I like the zen I, <laughs> I like the zen ones better. oh did you watch that one that the was YouTube one? that was cute <laughs> that was a little cute but i but a lot of like you know like the the market that we're trying to capture you know they that's what it is right like, what what tc oh yeah yeah, yeah. TCU, uh-huh. yeah but anyways okay i know i was actually talking to um i don't know who i was talking to I forget it was a, it was a, it was a minute ago but they're like, I sent the our our podcast that were on the table to that person, and they're not a business person or anything like that. And they were like, "Man, I'm not trying to get self help." I was like, "I don't know. This is not a, really a self help thing. It's more a discussion on topics of business and things like that, and our opinions on it, right? Um, and to help, yes, it is to help That's you know other should. entrepreneurs oh. and business owners to see, you know see how we deal with things, um, but." You know, I, I like to think we're friends and like mess around and stuff like that. You know, like we like to have a good time doing this. Yeah. So that's how I'm gonna transition <laughs> into Ed's topic. Oh, yep. So we're gonna have the fun part of our discussion. The more light, it's not so part. serious yeah. all the time. You know. All right. So. so we're all business people. We got busy lives. We got other things going on in our lives. You guys got dogs. We do. We do. So. There is one thing that I've always wondered. I was like, what does G do on his free time? So I, let's bring the attention over to G and let's hear about some hobbies or things that you do for fun. First and foremost, I appreciate you thinking of me, Ed. <laughs> Not work-related. So you cannot say that you like to shoot videos for fun. Why? I mean, they are fun. They are yeah. fun. Because I yeah. thought about that, too, because I could easily say that. But I'm not going to say that. I'm going to try So one thing I've been really, really trying to get good at is golf. I actually like full swing. I watch full swing and, you know, kind of like, all right, I need to get out there again. But it's been rainy and stuff. 
Huh? Is that a movie or a show? Full swing? Oh, it's a show. Oh, it's a show. I think I think in one of the episodes we've done here, Mike was like, "Man, they made golf fun and exciting." Yeah. <laughs> I watched it. So, I can't lie. You're, you're like, it "This cool. is dumb." It's, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> nah, he's he's running. He's like, "I can watch this shit again." Yeah, I turned it off after a few episodes. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been trying to get into golf. Um, I still am in the process of getting my first set, but I've been ha- hitting the driving range. I do have a driver. Um, trying to get that down. Um, I know a good friend of mine. He said you have to bitch slap the ball and turn your your shoulders. <laughs> you know, is how he described it. And actually, that's the mo- like best advice I've gotten as someone teaching me how to golf. Um, if you don't get that, then let's go golf, and I'll teach you. But yeah, I mean, I, I I've been I've been uh, doing a lot of golf things and trying to trying to get into that. Um, outside of that, I mean, I, I watch a lot of film movies. Um, I do like doing that a lot. Uh, I have been watching The Last of Us. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I know Mike, I think. Yeah, Aaron loves that, that show. Um, and Jyothi was like, this is just like Walking Dead. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that a zombie show too? I was, uh, yeah, kind, kind of, of. I know from you the know. video game. That's the only reason. I yeah. Love. But it's like HBO's take on it, you know. Oh. Well, it's a video game, but, yeah. you know, HBO made it into a show. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty good. It is probably one of the most popular shows out right now but uh but yeah i mean i like that i like i like going outdoors you know i do like hiking a lot um it's probably one of my favorite things like not only because you know you get the exercise or whatever but it's like uh it's one of those things where i know mike runs a lot but for me the hiking is like the mental thing i get to clear my whatever i'm um, like thoughts going on and just like de-stress so, Where do you normally go for those top three? Um, first one is uh, Quicksilver. I like Quicksilver the most because it's the closest. It's right off Alma Den. Um, I like uh, Half Moon Bay. Um, I forget the name of it. It's called Mora Point or something. I know. Rome, oh, yeah, yeah, no. wait, I think I've heard of that one before. Oh, God, I forget the name. And then there's Devil Slide, too. Devil Slide is one of my favorite mm. spots to, to hang out. It's called... Uh, the gray cove or the whales cove or something like that um i know i know roman's into that stuff so that's why i keep looking at roman to help oh, yeah, me he also golf, right? after. You yeah. golf. <laughs> I mean, so i like nature stuff but i hate hiking <laughs> so it's I like, really yeah i okay. like going camping and i like off-roading and going on the trails but the hiking part i do it because my wife is sending wants to do it but i do like <laughs> so if it's over two miles <laughs> i tell her I, I did over two roman miles does not walking. have the perfect level <laughs> He yeah, does not want to hike. He does not want to hike. <laughs> yeah, so, so. Wait, so wait. You said you want to do the outdoor stuff but not hike. So, what, so you, want to, kinda, you want to pull up to the site only. No, no. So what what I do is I I have a, a, a car. We call it Riggs when it's all off-roading. But like a built-out land cruiser. And we go off-roading. So we drive on trails that are like dirt. So mm. it's not like, you know, going to campground. And we just hike out like in places. I mean, camp out in places that are like secluded. Uh, so it's almost like hiking but with your car. I guess that's mm. the best way to put it. And we do hike, yeah. but I only do like a mile, two miles, and then that's it. I'm not going to go further than that. <laughs> you, how are you like so skinny? I don't understand. I don't think I'm skinny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you do golf like pretty seriously, yeah, right? I, mean, I think we talked like the about weather, it before. I think almost every week. Um, but it's only been a short period, so I'm not that good. But I've been doing it for probably like a year, year and a half serious. But like every week I was probably golfing before the weather. Now it's been a while, actually. We and gotta you, go tee off at Top Golf now. <laughs> yeah. I've actually never been to Top Golf, so that would be cool. Because you do like the actual course, right? You don't just yeah. do the driving range. Yeah, and I do like the the whole eighteen holes. And right by my house, I have a nine hole, so it's like shorter. It's like an hour to play. What is that? The Rancho? Uh, no, no, at uh, Santa Teresa. That's a nine hole. They have it both. They have an eighteen hole, like a full course, and they have a short course. How much does it cost there? I mean, they upped the price to 20. It used to be like Oh, that's 15. not that bad. Yeah. Dang. Well, I cannot hit a ball even at a driving range. So yeah, at what point can you even get to a course? You know, I it, it's crazy. A yeah, course it. and driving range is like a whole different like it's level different. of gaming. Because, you know, you get one ball, right? When you play golf, you hit one golf ball. When you go to driving range, you got like 100 golf balls. <laughs> so you have to hit that one really good. So it's a lot more stressful, a lot harder. And that's why a lot of people take so long to get onto the course because it's once you go out there first thing, you're like, man, this isn't what I thought it's going to be because it's so much harder. Man, if you get the older generation, like, 
and they're just like just going at it they'll just like look at you and just like sit there and watch you <laughs> and i feel so intimidated at yeah. times when they do that stuff dude yeah oh, cause, yeah because yeah, you have to really engulf you have to really get over people watching because you're playing with four people most of the time regardless so there's always three people watching you guaranteed so you have to get comfortable with other people watching you have to be really comfortable with that one ball you're gonna hit because if you lose that ball you lose a lot of points so i suck Dang, we need to host a meeting at a a range next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think driving range is great. Yeah, everybody should do a driving range. For oh, sure. driving range is fun. You just go there, you know, try to hit the ball and then have a few beers or whatever. It's cool. No pressure. Some pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's cool, man. I'll yeah, be there for time. the drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike. I know what your hobby is, but let's let everybody else know. Let's um, talk about your archery, man. I'm pretty sure everyone kind of knows one. How did we start, and where are you like? Where are you at with that right now? Uh, I started archery when we first moved here. Uh, I believe it was with uh, Aaron's brother. Uh, we went out to freaking. We were down in Morgan Hill, and I was like, "All right, let me just go ahead and like get this like cheap art like little bow thing." I didn't think I didn't think archery was what it is. Hmm. I thought it was a little more simplified than that, and like wasn't all this like customizable thing. So I started going over there. I started that once the Predators got my first bow set up. They set it up actually real, relatively quick, a little beginner bow. And then now I'm like six bows deep and like two crossbows. How like much is a bow? A half, uh, it depends. I mean, you can get anything from like 500 bucks to like my Omen is like 2,500. Is so that the kill shot one? That's the, the fastest bow, fastest bow in the market right now. Jesus. From PSC. So you is your next level kind of like going from the driving range to the golf course? Do you have to go kill something now? Or well, I mean, like, <laughs> like, what do you do now? So, I mean, like, I'm already shooting like pretty proficient at about 100 yards. Um, like, very proficient. My grouping's really good. Um, I Now I can shoot again now that my shoulder's good. So I'm back to shooting. Uh, I want to go hunting, but it takes a long time to, you know, to hunt. And that's time is not something I really, really have right now. So that is the next step. Uh, my other hobbies are boxing, jujitsu, running, um, you know, doing like my high intensity workouts that I do. Uh, what about stuff that you do with Ivy? Oh man, everything, everything like, you know, when I have Ivy, like we do archery, we box, uh, usually play with the dogs around here, like do, you know, do dad stuff, play games all the time, you know, <laughs> watch like, you know, just that's kind of do that stuff, you know, it's when dad modes on that's it's dad mode. So. Does she have a new hobby? She loves, well, Ivy's like, she loves to play on her, like, you know, her iPad, like the little horse game. She loves horse riding. Uh, so she does a lot of horse riding. I love watching her ride her horses and stuff like that. So like, that's always pretty awesome. Um, so we do that every Sunday. Uh, what else does she like to do? You're like, not to cut you off, but it's pretty funny because when you got this property, I told you, I was like, oh, it's so cool. You got all that space. Aren't you going to get a horse? And you told me you'd never get a horse because of the training aspect or like the craziness yeah. of a horse. And now your we're, daughter's We're inching away riding. towards that, right? Well, I mean, I we wouldn't, we wouldn't be, be able to have a horse here uh, just because of the terrain on it and everything like that. We'd have to do so much like stuff down there. But yeah, like from her trainers, trainer, uh, says i'm probably a, a few years away from having actually had to get a horse <laughs> so yeah no we're more than like we'll have one by the time she's like a teenager so do or you something. think you'll be able to train that horse or that's no i'm gonna leave that i'm gonna leave that horse to, training <laughs> i mean I, so like i didn't really so funny story about horses uh i was actually in um puerto Vallarta, mexico like with uh, my friend ralph uh, from players inc and we were over there and he had this like drunken idea for us to go ride horses and at that time i was like 300 and like 10 pounds <laughs> So, like, we go down to this little creek thing. We hop on these guys that don't speak any English. They put me on this tiny-ass little horse. Actually, you know, no, it was that they put her. The only the only uh, person that had any riding experience was Ralph's girlfriend. And, like, they are like, okay, like, they put her on this tiny horse, and they put me on this giant horse. So, like, we go out there. It doesn't tell me how to steer this thing. It doesn't say anything. The, the horse isn't on no rope. The horse takes off. I go with it, turns around. I still keep going in the direction I'm going. And I fall, <laughs> I fall off this horse, and I ended up in a freaking Mexican hospital. No, fuck. and I still have a lump on my right side of my hip. Oh from no, off. Oh, dude. like I never got taken care of. But like I always like were fearful of like horses. I feel for, but I didn't really like them. And then seeing Ivy uh, train horses with Brandy, her trainer, who's awesome, I like I got a new like appreciation for them. 
So like I'm like kind of uh, yeah. like more into like the horse stuff now. I think it's pretty awesome. Oh, but you said this terrain they can't like live out there. Basically, yeah, yeah like it's harder for them and stuff like that. Cause like there's a bunch of like rock and stuff. They need like softer surfaces and everything mm. for their like joints and everything. So all well, like kids when they go get to the teen years, they're like they want a car, but it, you know puts a whole like <laughs> Mustang. You know, a, real a, a real Mustang. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Horse, horses are wild, bro. I've seen so many now. Just being now, she's been doing it for a while now. So horses she's are so wild. good at it. Like yeah. all the videos you show us. Yeah. Oh no, she's crazy. She's, at crazy. It. she's natural. Like pretty much all the stuff that she does. And she looks like she's up there, hella high, right? Yeah, she's Especially when she's there. like kind of small too. Yeah, she. That's that thing is tall, man. Those things are some of those are big boys and girls. Crazy. All that's right, Ed. Scary. Oh, I'm more curious about Ed. I don't know. What I know what does Ed do for? It's hard because you know actually. It's your question, man. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, when I thought of this question, question, I was like, man, this would be a really good question for G. I didn't think about anything else at that point. <laughs> I was like, I can finally find out. No, because for me, I feel like the stuff that I do now were like my hobbies before. So like, I enjoy actually like going out to shoot photo, video, and whatnot. I think at a certain point, I like training my own dog. Yeah. <laughs> Until Wait, became... hold on. Time out, time out. You just told me I know. you can't say photo <laughs> or video, that's yet like... that's what you're saying. So are we saying Ed doesn't have a hobby? <laughs> no, I know. What, hobby, Ed, Ed, come on, man. I, don't know, I mean, I, th- I think at the or... time when I wasn't as busy, I think traveling was really fun. Hey, you see, yeah. Ed, oh, I think I see crazy the... traveling. I think I've seen like, pictures other... of like Greek from or I saw from one of Ed's videos yeah. and yeah. I was like, was damn crazy. it, you're traveling. No, videos. I was like, I, I think it was like when I first got out of college and I got my first full-time job when I was working at the hospital. Every time I had vacation saved up, we would go to another country for like two-ish weeks. And I thought that was super fun because when you see other places, it's like a totally different perspective for everything. And then, I mean, there's like those pros and cons where there's like the more rundown countries where you're like, man, we need to appreciate life. And there's like the more like vacation-like countries like Bali or like Japan. I'm like, damn, these places are sick and I would definitely want to like keep coming back because it's just a great time there. I think everybody should, even if it's not a hobby, everybody <clears throat> should definitely experience it. So what other, what other hobbies do you have? I'll give you like three. Man, my, yeah, those are my like two more. Three, man. <laughs> Huh? Does, I said I could give you like two more. Does fitness have too many hobbies? Count as a hobby? That's a good yeah. I, would. I think yeah. at the level you're at, yeah. What does that mean? You're dedicated. Like it's <laughs> no, that's why I'm like, damn. Does that count as a hobby? Because I take that kind mean? of. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you're truly dedicated to. Have you seen this guy with the shirt? I go to the gym because yeah. I gotta go to the gym. Or I would <laughs> say working out is kind of like a serious hobby, right? Kind of like, well, I feel like all of us are at that level. Do where you feel like it's health versus like hobby? Is like taking care of yourself? Is that what it is? No, I think I like. I like. I enjoy it. Yeah, so that's a hobby. Yeah. yeah. Like, I go there because I'm trying to, like, be in shape, but I don't like going to the gym. What? No, heck no. Well, you like working out, right? Yeah, that's how I need it. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I, like, uh, I don't know. What? I'm like 50 50. Wow, this whole time I thought everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. And it was just hard to stay disciplined. I, I think, okay, so my trainer gives me, like, certain, like, circuits and things to do. I like yeah. certain workouts more than others. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but that's, like, I mean, I don't hate it. Yeah. I like, for me, it's more like, uh, like, you know, Michael says mental. For me, it's also kind of like that, but um, I don't hate it, I would say. You know, I do like certain days better than others. Like, actually, cardio days are like, actually, I almost like passed out today because I didn't have enough water. I was like, on the, <laughs> I was on the stairs. I was like, I mean, I guess oh, so <laughs> with me, it's different. Like, I love going to the gym to work out the yeah. muscle stuff, but I think what will never make me love the gym is cardio. I've never been able to get into yeah. cardio like my entire life. I was so happy when I found out golf. Like, if you play 18 rounds of golf, you do like over a thousand calories. Oh, shoot. Which nobody ever thought was a real deal. Yeah. I think you get a without a cart. calories. No, with the cart, because you're driving the uh, car, but you're moving and getting off. And off. I would want to test that one. I, I use my uh, Fitbit for that. You might want to check so, your Fitbit then. I've checked it multiple <laughs> times. So. No, but I, you really do. I don't know. I could Google it. Because you you you're walking, it. like, still walking. Yeah, you're moving it. and walking yeah. a lot, because yeah. you don't, like, drive up to every single ball. Like, yeah. You walk. Um, so that was kind of cool. I used to go play that short course as my cardio, but now. Man, you know what? I think I got to go with you one time. I need yeah, to track this myself. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We need to find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. I, we're, knowing Eddie, he'd probably bring his camera to you. Uh, we will <laughs> all bring our cameras. Well, yeah. Aaron's dad is coming here at the end of the month, and he wants to go golfing. So I have, go. a, I have a connection at Pebble Beach. So Where's Pebble I, Beach? So we're going to like Pebble Beach. Yeah. So the table at the Pebble Beach is what I'm hearing? Yeah, because I have a hookups at uh, Roy's at the Spanish Bay, and then the, the guy over nice. there wants to 
he said he's like anytime I want to go down there, he's like he got like rooms for me and like the get on the get on the course. list or whatever. Yeah, that's like six hundred yeah. bucks. Uh, that's that, how much? that ain't much. Like six hundred to play. On. It's only fi- it's like six hundred to play in round of five hundred over there. Oh, right. oh beach, Pill Beach is like oh, it's like a bougie place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's like the place. It's like on the ocean. Oh, so you'll be excited for that then? Uh, yeah, it would be. I'd they have to, tours I'd, there, I'd, right? I literally have to spend a lot of time working myself to make sure I play good over there. Yeah, because people will. I mean, if you yeah, if you're that's... at Pebble Beach, you're like, all right, I'm serious about golfing. Oh, we got to train, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I've been out there chilling with Aaron, and I've seen a lot of drunk people on that course messing around. Dude. <laughs> oh, know. so that's what we got. Okay, oh, so that's, that's fine, the We're good. <laughs> yeah, it gets wild. Golf gets pretty wild. I don't think a lot of like I play with some friends that it gets pretty crazy. Like a lot of people think golf is super sophisticated and proper like when you're out there it's, it gets wild they say it's a gentleman's game <laughs> yeah, i don't know it's questionable that. That <laughs> is I, question- I think mike's right <laughs> i have a few friends who like like broke clubs on there like oh yeah turn yeah. right you mother dolphin you I know <laughs> like, 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 i have friends who right. fight every single time no way the they shut their clubs and like just curse at the ball every time they hit it. it's it's yeah no i have a group of friends where they go like every weekend and they all bring their dads and they and i see them like chugging beers like at 8 a.m and shit <laughs> yeah. all the time that's why we like golf like, right. that'll be the new, <laughs> that will be the new hobby that i'm gonna pick up right <laughs> all right cool so any other hobbies you want to go over that's i think it. i think golf would be good ed needs to find i feel like ed really just was like trying to make up something um so we got to find him a real hard <laughs> hobby. I, I just love how he answers like when i was thinking a question i was thinking <laughs> g what does g do? <laughs> Cool, guys. All right, guys. That is a wrap then for our table episode number six. Uh, make sure to follow us on network.ptv where we will release all the reels and little clips and snippets um, and teasers uh, for the episodes. We also have uh, Drinks and Dogs on there. We also have clips for our, our uh, YouTube shows on there that are coming soon. So make sure to follow that. Um, Mike? Yep. Uh, make sure you're checking us out on all your major podcast platforms. Share it with your friends. And for YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, share it with everybody. Yeah, guys. That's it for me. Catch you guys on the next one.